Well, Bruce, there's so much to talk about in uh, New South Wales harness racing, particularly you and the team at Club Menangle. I'm going to get straight to the point. There's been a lot of discussion, um, and I want to know how founded it is about considerations, now not next year, but going ahead about possible changes to the Miracle Mile. I'm talking about how you get into the race, um, what the field size might be, all those sorts of elements. Any substance to that? Um, in a word, no. Uh, now, every year we review uh, the Miracle Mile Carnival. Now, this year it's, of course, been a really different lead-in for us, but um, the process at the end of it will be the same. We'll, we'll sit down and we'll go through um, what's worked, what hasn't worked, um, if there needs to be any changes. Um, of course, this year, if there were even considered changes, it wouldn't have happened given what's what's um, what's occurred around us. But, um, so, but in terms of... The, I, so not foreshadowing any changes. Um, having said that, um, as, as I say, we do the review every year. Um, there has been plenty of talk. Um, obviously, some people have some strong ideas about uh, about changes. And let's face it, the the, the, the history of the Miracle Mile has been around uh, around controversy, and and uh, and it, that's that's good for the race to talk it up. And uh, so we're we're certainly happy to consider changes. Uh, and if any of those are seen to have merit, um, absolutely, we, we would we would talk about those after this year's carnival. Can I ask, just out of left field, and I want to talk um, a lot more about the Miracle Mile as well, but is there any consideration then to to another race on your calendar, maybe a, a Len Smith becoming an invitational type event? Yeah, that's that's certainly a possibility. We we have talked quite a bit about the Len Smith in the last in the last six months. Um, now the race, of course, didn't occur this year due to the COVID situation. The the placement of it um, will need to change uh, from our point of view as a result of the of the change to the calendar to the racing um, season. So, um, with that, has brought about uh, how can we uh, make the race more significant on the on the calendar. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a good chance we could do something more more significant with that race. It's something. It's certainly a race we want to build more. So, um, but but yeah, I, I think that's a that that's certainly on the cards. All right, we know it's been a tough time everywhere. It's been a, a year that we'd all like to forget in a lot of ways. But the great news is the Miracle Mile prize money, despite the challenges, is staying at that magical one million, and it will stay in the same time slot. Yeah, that's that's right, mate. So um, we're really pleased with that. I mean, fortunately for us, we, we've had good news around funding um, at the right time. We deliberately held off making any announcements around the carnival uh, with prize money for that reason. It was always our desire to maintain it where it was, but um, that was going to be a real challenge with the original funding forecast that we were given. Um, so uh, so it, it, it's, uh, it is great news because the whole carnival prize money will remain as it was. Uh, so that's that's great news, not just for the Miracle Mile itself. I mean, it's our million-dollar million race for harness racing. So we, we didn't want to lose that. Uh, but we've also been able to maintain all the other Group 1 races around it, both the qualifying uh, races, the sprints, uh, the Newcastle Mile will uh, be retained as a Group 1 race as a qualifier as well. So... Um, the two hundred thousand dollar races remain uh, as was the chariots of fire, the Oaks, the Derby, the Ladyship, um, all remain at those levels as well. So that, that that's great uh, for for that level of racing. Yeah, fantastic news. Now they're the major races. Um, everyone says what's happening on the the more bread and butter front, and you've got some really positive news um, which has come out about. I think it's upwards of one and a half million in uh, in additional stake money has been put on the table. Yeah, that, that, that's right, mate. So in addition to the, the feature races being retained, so as I said, perfect timing for us at this time of year to get the updated funding information. And and what's important with that funding information too is it's a, a mixture of actual uh, data that they've they've been able to collect up until the end of October. But also it's, it takes into account um, some changes in patterns uh, that were expected to happen when things like the government stimulus, et cetera, started to be wound back um, and what effect that would have. So it takes into consideration those, those factors as well. So we're confident to make these changes and that we can sustain them. So, and as you say, it, it's actually 1.6 million over the course of a full year um, is, is the figure we're talking about. Um, our our midweek, prize, midweek prize money goes back to 9,000 where it was pre-COVID. 
um, most of the tiers on a Saturday night go up by two thousand. Our, our base, our base, our starting point on a Saturday night will uh, be thirteen thousand, up from the current eleven. Um, the other tiers all go up by two. Sixteens go to eighteen. Eighteens go to twenty. Twenty twos go to twenty four. Um, we also uh, will be introducing a lot more twenty thousand dollar races um, that was previously base prize money. Uh, uh, we'll come on to those programs as well. And we also take over the funding of the um, the country series, which has been so successful. Uh, and we, we take back the top ups to the heats out in the country, and we also uh, uh, take over the funding of that uh, the finals again. So, as I say, in all, it, it's um, it's 1.6 million um, over the course of the next 12 months uh, that we'll bring back in, and that starts from 1 January. So we're, we're only a couple of weeks away from that that uh, that taking effect. Yeah, it's nice to have that uh, that really good news to share. Um, just in in wrapping up with you, Bruce, um, COVID has made it really hard for people to get trackside. Uh, we know, you know, we're largely coming out the other side of a touch wood. But uh, where are you at with it all? With uh, with crowds, uh, what what are the what are the next steps, so to speak? Yeah. So again, it. it Hopefully it stays the way it is, but it is getting more positive news at the right time for us. So, um, for example, um, last Saturday night we had our first um, night markets back here, which had been so so successful for us at, at bringing new audiences to the track um, on a Saturday night. And um, so that was our first one since COVID struck. And we, we had 3,000 people through uh, attending the markets. And the number of those people sitting trackside um, they weren't allowed to sit at tables and chairs, so they're on picnic rugs and things. But the, the number of people through the course of the night watching the races is fantastic because they're, the majority of those people um, aren't harness racing uh, passionate. They, they're here for the night markets, for the food markets. But to see them all out there watching the racing is, is great because that's for, from our point of view, that's what those sorts of promotions are about. Bruce, terrific to get that update. We stay tuned on the Miracle Mile, potentially on the Len Smith as well, but it's building towards a remarkable carnival um, with so many stars across all age groups. And we look forward to uh, another fantastic carnival of miracles just around the corner. Thanks for your time, Bruce. Great. Thanks, mate. Merry Christmas to you and your family, mate, and to, and to everyone in the industry.